Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to import a data set from the internet uh, into your Hadoop cluster on Google Cloud on Dataproc and then how to process it using PySpark. Now, this is a continuation of the previous video where I had shown how to set up Dataproc in the first place. So if you want to learn that, please check a look, take a look at the previous video. Um, so this in this video, we'll assume that this Dataproc cluster exists. So this is our Dataproc cluster and it is running. So I'm going to get started with this now. I'm just going to hit the cluster here and uh, go on to web interfaces. And I'm going to start my uh, Jupyter Notebook here and just click on this link over here. So this, um, okay, so just go on to GCS and uh, my first Spark file.ipynb, which I had created in the previous video. So this is where uh, we'll be doing our uh, coding in order to process our data set. And let me open one more thing. We also have a Jupyter Lab. So I'm going to open this as well. So the first thing we have to do is uh, we have to import some data from the internet onto our Hadoop cluster and from the Hadoop cluster onto our Google storage, which is uh, over here, which is over here, which I have created earlier. Um, so that is bucket one data proc. So I'm just going to keep this open here. So in order to do import the data into our uh, uh, storage bucket, uh, we're going to have to use Jupyter Lab here. So in Jupyter Lab, click on this terminal button over here, and this opens a terminal um, in our Hadoop cluster. Uh, so just to kind of show this again, so if you go to the VM instances, our Hadoop cluster, in this case, it's a four machine cluster. So we have a master computer and four worker nodes. Now the master computer can be viewed by clicking on this SSH button over here. And let me just do that quickly. So here is our master computer. It's a Linux machine and we have a terminal uh, connection to this uh, master computer. And this exact same cluster is the one that we are connecting to through our Jupyter Lab terminal here as well. So here it is. And uh, having connected to this, I am now going to um, import some data from the internet. So here is some, uh, you know, uh, New York City taxi data set from the internet. Where am I getting this from? It's uh, from the New York City taxi data set, NYC taxi data sets. So you could also go there and just uh, uh, go to any one of these and you can just uh, you know right click on a uh, URL that contains a CSV file and you can paste that over here. You can do a WGET and then you can paste it here. And if you do this, then that uh, command, the wget command, uh, followed by the URL whose uh, data that you want to obtain, uh, that together will result in the data getting downloaded. So let's uh, go ahead and do that now. So I'm just going to copy uh, all five of these commands. Uh, notice that they are uh, you know, followed by a semicolon here that shows that the command ends. So I'm just going to copy all five commands and I'm going to paste it in I'm going to paste it in the um, terminal over here by pressing Control Shift V, and so that will result in one after the other these five different CSV files, really large CSV files, getting downloaded. You can see it's about 655 MB um, uh, each, around 600 to 700 MB each, and there are five of those, and they're getting downloaded here into our uh, Hadoop cluster uh, master node, that is um, into this computer right here. Okay, and finally the last file, I just have to hit enter because uh, you know it kind of stopped here without, uh, so I just have to hit enter here and then we'll start downloading the last one. The next thing I'm going to do is now, I'm going to take each of these files from the current location, wherever it has been saved, into um, Google Storage and into a particular uh, bucket within Google Storage. So let me go back here to my Google storage bucket. So in this um, RS bucket one data proc, you see um, there are a couple of uh, folders already. I'm gonna create, so this folder here, the notebooks folder contains the PySpark code that I write. So I'm gonna create a separate uh, folder called data. Uh, I'm sorry, just gonna create a folder called data and hit create. 
and now I have this folder here. I'm just going to copy this entire path and I'm going to go over here. And if you were to paste this path, you can see it basically is RS bucket one data proc forward slash data. And that's what I have here. So I'm taking each of these files that I just downloaded from the internet and saving it into the Google storage bucket uh, and subfolder within that bucket that I just now created. So um, actually, I don't need this uh, US East. I don't need this. I'm going to delete this for now. Um, and I can just copy all five commands. And I'm going to hit uh, paste over here, control shift V. And the data gets uh, saved one by one from your Hadoop cluster into your um, Google storage. Now, this is your Hadoop cluster. Um, and this is an interface to your Hadoop cluster. And this um, Jupyter PySpark is also an interface to your Hadoop cluster. And then your data itself is stored in Google Storage, which is a separate service from data proc. So all of this Hadoop cluster is in data proc. So this is data proc, whereas your storage is a separate service. So why are we doing this? Uh, because we want to store our data separately from our Google, uh, from our Hadoop cluster. The Hadoop cluster, which is your data proc, we only want to use it for computation uh, because it is expensive to uh, keep it turned on all the time. So we turn it on, use it for uh, processing our data, and then we save the data for long-term storage in this Google storage bucket, which is a lot less uh, expensive. So that's why we are doing it in this manner. So let me just check. Okay, so I need to hit enter once again for the very last command and that's also getting saved. Once that is saved, I'm going to check whether it has indeed been saved in. Okay, so it has all looks like it's been saved. So I'm going to go over here to buckets and I'm going to hit refresh. And when I do that, um, you can see here, let me just widen this a little bit. So you can see here that five different files, yellow trip data 2019, one, two, three, four, five, have been saved in this uh, folder in Google storage as we specified. So the next thing I would like to do is now go over to my Jupyter PySpark uh, notebook here and start processing uh, this data. So the very first thing I would like to do is I would like to read all this data into a data frame. And here's my command to do that. So I'm saying uh, tripsdf, that's my data frame, name of my data frame that I'm giving. And I'm giving this command here that says, okay, fetch all the data in this particular folder into this data frame. And here's the syntax. I'm going to hit shift enter to run this command. And this will take a couple of minutes, depending on how much computing power you have. It may take even a little bit longer because it is after all a huge data set. Okay. So now the data has been read. If you noticed the star sign just beside this, that's what indicates that it was still running. As soon as you see the star sign is gone, that means the data has been read. And I can now view the data, I can just look at a few records. I can say, show me the top 10 rows in this data set. So here it is. I can see that. And I can also get some information about the data itself by just typing in some commands. Uh, sorry, print the number of rows in the data frame, print the, print the columns in the data frame. I can do all that. And there it is. So there are 37 million rows in this data frame. And here are the 18 columns. The next thing I can do is I'm just uh, doing a few simple transformations just to show you what can be done with PySpark. So I now am going to select a subset of my columns, uh, passenger count, trip distance, and tip amount, and save it in a new data frame. And I'm going to show the number of rows in the new data frame. So just 10 rows from the new data frame. It's a lot smaller. I'm going to do a count of how many rows are there. There are same 37.5 million rows. I'm going to remove duplicates. So I'm going to say drop duplicates from the this particular data frame. Create a new data frame called trips df sub no dupe for no duplicates. And then I'm going to do a count of that and there are about 1.4 million rows. So a lot of rows have been deleted uh, duplicates and uh, I'm going to do a describe. So it gives me some statistical information about the um, data in these three columns. 
and here is some information count and the mean and standard deviation min max etc for passengers trip distance and tip amount and having done this transformation the next thing the last thing i want to do is i want to take this trips uh, df sub no dupe uh, data frame which i have created out of my original data frame um, and i want to save it into uh, a different uh, you know subfolder in the same bucket so this time i want to save it in a subfolder called data2 so i'm going to go back to my bucket here i'm going to go one step uh, back and i'm going to create a new folder called data2 just so that it is here and now i'll go back to my um uh PySpark, uh jupyter notebook and i specify all these parameters i specify the uh, google's um, storage file path and also the file name i want to call this as trips df sub csv basically i'm giving it the same name as the data frame i'm giving the csv file the same name as the data frame i'm saying the format is csv header is true so the first column will be treated as a header and i hit shift enter as you can see the star sign is here that means it is still trying to save it so we just wait until the star sign goes away at which point we know that it has saved it so it has now been saved and we will just confirm whether it's been saved we go back to our data data storage here we go to data2 subfolder and uh, sure enough there is a uh, trips df sub csv but it looks like it's a folder it's a subfolder so why is that so it's called a folder not a file so why is that so let me just go inside and uh, see what's in it so inside what you have is a bunch of um, actually weirdly named files uh, these seems like machine named files and this is a characteristic of how hadoop um, you know treats large files it basically chunks these files into smaller chunks and then saves those chunks uh, while exposing um, the name of the folder itself uh, for the user so we can access all these sub i mean all these chunks of files uh, not individually but by means of this um, folder uh, on the higher level so just to give you an example we already did that so if you look at the very first line of code that we did um, so we said spark read csv uh, gs rs bucket one data proc forward slash data so we didn't give specific file names so if you go back and look at data so data is a folder and within that you have a bunch of files so rather than refer to these individual files separately which would be very cumbersome if you have hundreds of files we simply instead just refer to the data folder and uh, by doing that we automatically got access to all the files within that folder so that is uh, the principle behind this and uh, so that was basically it uh, you know so what we did was we imported uh, a file you know a bunch of files from the internet onto our hadoop cluster and from the hadoop cluster moved it into google uh, storage this way we avoid having to download these large files onto our local machines um, and so we directly import these uh, files from the cloud from the internet into your cloud machine and then um, we used uh, pyspark to read that data into a data frame and then we did some transformations created a new data frame and we saved that back to the same storage uh, bucket so this reflects a typical workflow that you might encounter while trying to analyze data very large size data from the internet using pyspark uh, by means of google data proc hadoop cluster once again i want i would like to remind you that after you are done with everything please be sure to delete your cluster if you are completely done with it you can completely delete your cluster this um PySpark code will be saved. You can click save here. It will be saved for you inside your bucket over here, which you don't have to delete. So it will be saved in this location uh, in notebooks over here in Jupyter. So here's where it will be saved. So you have all your code saved and you have your data also saved. So you really don't need your Hadoop cluster anymore because you used it only for computation. So at this point, you can go ahead and delete it and there it goes if you don't delete it then you're going to have to pay a lot of money to keep it running so that could quickly add up to some huge cost so please be careful about that and once you're done with your analysis task be sure to delete your hadoop cluster so that's it for now thank you for watching